Hello and welcome. So today we are diving deep into this month's journal, um, which is all about being a technophobe, um, but choosing the right things and then flowing into loving tech. So let's see if I can um, guide you through this so you too will be a tech lover by the end of this. So the quote I've added to the journal this month is, technology is anything that wasn't around when you were born. So I was born in 78. Um, so pretty much everything we're working with nowadays was not around. Um, the first computers were out, obviously, but technology has moved forward so much. Um, gosh, in the last hundred years, it's insane and it's not going to stop. We're not going back to the old days. We cannot stop technology from moving forward. But what we can do is learn to love it and um, learn to work with it and use it to the best of our abilities um, and for it to help us. So not hopefully not put people out of jobs. But if you're a solopreneur, um, chances are you might hire uh, a VA every now and then. You will probably hire a mentor, um, whether spiritual business or tech mentor. Um, but the chances are you'll do all of your social media yourself, all of your online presence yourself, um, or you'll do the, the majority of it. So if you're a technophobe, you're really... Um, or you're not au fait even, you might not hate tech, you might not fear tech, but you, um, you know, it's moving at such a quick pace, you kind of can't keep up and you really don't know what you want or need. So this is what this month's um, journal is all about. The overwhelm of technology, what we think we need, what we're told we need, um, and what actually we do need in our businesses. So uh, let's scroll down. There's four simple steps. Okay, so you can either go read the journal, the link will be below, or you can watch this. So let's break it down. Step one, or the simple um, four steps we're going to go through. Number one, um, breaking it down, what tech do you actually need for your biz? Okay, because I tell you, there is an array of things you could or you could need, you definitely need, you might need, you might need in the future. So let, let's break it down. And also in the um, written or typed rather version of the um, journal at the very bottom there's a tick list of all of the tech so I do advise you to go look at the typed journal as well because the whole list of different kind of tech that you might possibly need is there so it's a nice checklist for you at the very very bottom so what tech do you actually need for your biz <sighs> let's break it down. So first and foremost, most people think they need websites. So while a lot of the websites I see are just pretty, they don't actually serve the purpose that they're supposed to serve. So they've been built by a designer, not somebody who perhaps understands um, funnels or the way a client will be flowing to you through tech. Okay, so what's the difference between a funnel and a website? Websites are normally very visually appear appealing. So they're pretty, they've got nice pictures on, um, they've got a lot of information on. Now, in the tech 
online world, you don't have long, unless your clients love reading long posts, um, lots of information on a website is not going to get read. Okay, so with a funnel, it looks like a website, but it's serving a purpose. You are funneling the clients through to an offer or data collection, like come on my web, uh, come on my mailing list, come on my journal mailing list, etc. So funnels are, they look like websites, they, they are web pages, but they serve a purpose. They are designed to bring clients in and flow through a process. So you're either kind of capturing email addresses to lead them onto an email list and more marketing. Um, you could be leading them directly into a call, a one-to-one -one call. You could lead them directly into um, a sales funnel. And again, within those sales funnels, there could be upsells, downsells, etc. So do you need a website or do you need funnels? Nowadays, I go with funnels personally. It's serving a much bigger purpose and you can still put your nice information on there. But the nice information comes kind of afterwards, after you have walked them through the process and they're then on your mailing list or they're, they're kind of to the next step closer to working with you or knowing what you're all about. Next thing, if you work with clients um, and you offer services, whether one-to-one, -one, group, etc., online booking system, for me, it's a must. It saves so much time. It streamlines your bookings. You shouldn't get uh, double bookings. So, uh, yeah, it saves you time. It's a smooth experience for the client. So they're in control of when they book, they can see your online diary, and then you shouldn't get people, clients, um, calling or texting at ridiculous times, asking to go um, on, you know, what can I have an appointment this weekend or whatever it is, you shouldn't get that. So online booking systems for me, if you work with clients, whether one-to-one -one or group, or you're offering services, this is a must, this is a must have. So funnels, must have, personally. Online booking system, must have. Automation and scheduling. Now, this is a, for me, must have. Maybe for you, a nice to have. For me, I like to sit down and I get hyper-focused on a task. So this morning, I'm hyper-focusing on my vlog. So I've written, oh, sorry, my journal. I've written my journal. I've written the four steps. I've created the um, pictures, the memes the, to go with it. Um, I'm doing the video now. Next, I'll do all the scheduling. So it's boom, it's all together. And I know I've ticked off everything of my journal to-do list for the whole month and I'll have done it in one section. For me, it saves a huge amount of time and confusion uh, and I stay on point. So if that sounds like something that you either need in your business um, or you're already doing, then automation and scheduling software is a must. So within the software I use, and I'll talk about it in a minute, um, I can do um, automated and scheduled um, social media posts, emails, blogs, I call them a journal, um, oh, all sorts, all sorts. Last but not least, I'm going to touch on courses and memberships. 
So again, it's a must for me because I have online courses that I either take people through or they're self-study. I also have memberships. So if these are something you already have in your business or you're looking to have in the future, um, this is a technology that you definitely need to dive deep into. There are there's lots out there. There's lots out there for every single one of these things I'm telling you about. Um, but with the courses and memberships, if you're hosting currently on, say, Facebook, and it's a great place to host um, courses, groups and memberships. It is. I've done it myself. The only thing is you're beholden to Facebook. So um if they decide to restrict your profile and stop you commenting on the week of your launch or your challenge or whatever it is, what do you do? You've got to have backup profiles. You've got to have a VA or somebody else who is admin that can go in and be doing the comments and things like that. And that is happening more and more. Although I do understand it's much easier to funnel people into a Facebook group than it is to get them off of Facebook and onto uh, an external course or membership area. But these are all things to consider. Only you know your business. I'm just giving you uh, an overview and helping you get from technophobe to tech lover. So number two, so that was that was step number one, breaking it down. What tech do you actually need for your biz? And remember, there's a tick list on the journal, the typed journal right at the bottom. So I suggest you go there and then tick them out. There's a huge list. So I've just touched on the essential four areas for what I feel um, online and offline businesses that are in the health and wellness and creative and spiritual genre okay so number two should you sign up for all of the platforms or find an all-in-one platform so I'm going to talk from my own experience because I've done both um when it comes to your kind of tech entities, we discussed, you know, four above in step number one. So that could lead you to four different tech entities. I had way more than that, I can tell you. So I have had various platforms like uh, MailChimp, Active Tap Campaign, Lead Pages, Teachable, Once Hub, Ten to A. Thrive Cart, oh, PayPal, you know, I've got loads, 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 probably 10. Now, some of those are free-ish to use. They charge you per uh, kind of payment going through. However, a lot of them are not free to use, are they? So things like lead pages are was around £300 a year. Teachable went from um, something like $25 a month to $57, I think, dollars a month. That's when I decided to look elsewhere. Um, Once Hub is like a scheduling software. That's around $10, $15 a month. 10, 15 pounds a month, something like that. But it all adds up, okay? Um, and if you're doing even a podcast, if you're doing a podcast, how much is that a month? So you end up spending a lot of money on your tech. So one, you need to know what you really, really, really need. Um, and then to find the technology to add to that, there are things you need to consider. One, how much is it? How many boxes of the things of your um, business is it ticking? How much are you required to learn? Like, is the platform simple or is it, you know, you need to know your tech to be able to get around it? So it's a big learning curve. Uh, so 
using all of those platforms was a big learning curve for me, requiring me to watch s multiple videos and how to's, all the separate fees, also maintaining each individual account, remembering passwords. Thankfully, Google kind of does it for me. And I'm really bad. I probably use the same one for everything now because it was just getting a nightmare. So it's a bit of a juggling act. But maybe if you only need one or two pieces of software, maybe it is the one for you. Now, however, in July 2023, I made the bold decision to move over to an all-in-one system. And it was mainly because uh, a couple of the systems had hiked their prices up so much that it actually taken away the benefits that I signed up for in the first place. They told me they were giving me way more benefits, but nothing that was nothing that I actually needed. So uh, July 2023, I decided to change. Now, the transition period from going to like, for me, I don't know, six different platforms down to one platform, as you can imagine, was significant. Okay, I gave myself... I think two months to gradually transfer everything over. So we're talking websites, funnels, everything. Um, the good thing is with most of the platforms that I signed up to, even though I do not pay them anymore, I can log on and see my information still. Now, it doesn't happen with every single one of those systems, but it means some of the online courses I can just gradually bring them over. There was no major stress. Clients still have access to some of the stuff. If not, I've brought all the main programs over immediately. Um, what else can I tell you about an all-in-one system? It's all in one place. There's one password. There is one help desk, which is way more responsive than all of those other um, systems that I was using. Um, you can monitor your stats in one place. You can go on and if you're like me who can get, um, oh, I don't know what I'm doing today kind of energy. Um, when you log on to the system, you've got uh, a list of everything that is on there, marketing, um, sites, memberships, courses. You've got a list down there. You're like, oh, yeah, today I have to do the journal. So I'll go into the blog section of the marketing tab. Done. Um, also, you're in the same system because then you just go, right, I've done my journal. I'm now going to cut and paste into social media and it's all in. I don't need to be logging in and out of everything. So that's why I moved over to the all-in-one system because the price is up here in the buy you know buy one get a massive bill place the bills were going up higher and higher and higher and I wasn't getting any um anything more from them so that's why I moved so for me the decision to consolidate everything into an all-in-one platform was one of the best moves I've ever made um it saved me time it streamlined my systems uh, it saved me a lot of money a lot of money um, and allows me to focus on what matters most. And like I say, I can be like, oh, wow. And then I log on and I'm like, boom, laser focused. It's fabulous. Um, so if you're someone who prefers having everything in one place, an all in one system is for you. If you're a person who enjoys the flexibility of using multiple platforms, then that route is for you. So consider your goals, consider your needs and the level you want your future biz to be at. Like you might not be doing courses yet, but if you're thinking about it, you need to add that in to what the monthly um, amount would be that you would pay in all of the systems or what it would be in an all-in-one system. Okay. So that was the second part. Now, three, 
<laughs> this is interesting. So once you have, three is mentor, VA, or do it yourself. So once you've done a list of what you, what technology your business needs, and then you've decided on the service provider, what you're going to do next. Are you going to get like a tech mentor, a tech VA, or are you just going to do it yourself? So let's start with a tech mentor. That's a bit like me. I am a business spiritual tech mentor. I, within my packages, I am sit down, do one-to-ones. We divinely design the tech world of your business and branding and strategy and structure. We do everything. And then from there, I put on a tech wizard hat. Um, I go on, hopefully, to an all-in-one system um, and I get everything set up for you. Then what is super important is I teach you how to maintain it because we don't want you fully reliant on somebody else. I want to empower you. So I'll set it all up. I'll do all of the major hard work. And then, yes, of course, I've got a maintenance program where I can just go in every month and keep things maintained. But I do always teach clients how to maintain their own system. Because what if I am very ill and got to cancel sessions, etc. So I'm here to do the work, but I'm also here to empower people. So that's the tech mentor. So the next one was a VA. So what do you, what, what could you do with a VA? So you need to provide them with a clear list of tasks. Um, You need to give them all the necessary information and photos and wording. Uh, They will require a plan of action, which you will definitely need to stay on top of for them. Okay. Um, Yes. So while a VA can be a cost effective um, option for you, remember that you do have to keep in mind that you're going to be way more involved in the setup process. You do need to provide the wording, the pictures, the maybe the fonts, the colours, etc. You're going to need to provide that to them. Last but not least, the do-it-yourself option. And that's probably where most of us start, right? I'm just lucky that I had um, a career in IT um, before starting my own business. So many people opt for this route because they think it's the cheapest way to go. However, that's not necessarily true. If you are not au fait with tech, um, you could be wasting a lot of time and money. If you don't have the not necessary knowledge and expertise, Okay, so technology can be complex. And if you're using lots of different um, systems, then it's going to be harder for you as well, because you've got to learn this system, you've got to learn this system, you've got to learn this system, and then implement it all. So um, yeah, you may encounter roadblocks and setbacks, um, which could have been prevented with a tech mentor, um, or even a, a VA. Okay, so just consider um, what you're doing and how it's going to help you in the long run, saving you time and money. Okay, so number four, learning the basics to maintain and grow your business. Yes. So when it comes to setting up, your online platform or platforms, it's definitely important to choose the right person. Whether it's someone like myself, who's a spiritual tech business mentor, or whether it's a a VA. Um, 
if you're relying solely on yourself, remember it can be risky um, because you might not know what you are doing um, and you're going to have to watch a lot of videos. Equally, if you're relying solely on one mentor or VA, that can also be risky because we can get ill and sometimes people just close their businesses and then you're left not knowing what to do. So you have to learn the basics of the online maintenance. I always emphasise this, the importance of empowering my clients. I don't want my clients to be solely reliant on me. I love doing the work, but I want to empower them to know their way around the system. That's also why I really love the all-in-one system. Um, and again, there's a link below and above. It is an affiliate link and it's in the journal as well. And you can see my name written in it, Jane. Um, but I would not recommend anything if I did not think it was good. OK, so. Knowing the basics you can ensure your online world keeps running smoothly through unforeseen circumstances. Equally, if you were to get ill and you did everything on your own, that's it. Your um, online presence just goes or you've got to struggle through whilst you're ill um, and trying to keep working. Okay, it doesn't really work. So whether you're doing it on your own, it's good to have a backup of uh, a mentor or a VA. And like vice versa, if you've got a mentor or a VA, it's very good to know the basics of the software that you are actually paying for for your business. Um, so the basics would be learning the necessary skills like learning how to do an email campaign, learning how to do or check an automation. Because if somebody else has set up the automation for you, you shouldn't really need to do anything. Um, knowing how to open and close your calendar for your online calendar. What else could there be? Uploading and scheduling for social media. All of your accounts should have been connected previously, so that shouldn't be a problem. Learning how to do a blog and upload it. Um, learning how to upload videos to an online course. OK, these are all um, basics. And I know in the all in one um, uh, platform that I use, Easy Peas Business, uh, they literally have really simple videos that you can go through anyway. But I personally teach my clients how to do it because I feel like that one to one um, process of walking somebody through, it goes in the brain uh, and the, the heart, the physicality of you much quicker. Uh, what else can I tell you? That's it. That is literally it. They're the four steps from going from a technophobe to a tech lover. So it is knowing what you actually need, confusion and overwhelm cause fear. OK, so we want to get out of the fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. So let's break it down. You need to know what your business needs tech wise. Once you know that, you need to figure out is an all in one platform or all the platforms. Then step three, you need to find like who's going to set it up, who's going to do it, a mentor, a VA, or are you going to do it yourself? And then you have to learn the basics to maintain and grow your business and stay out of overwhelm. The tick list is on the journal. I'll put a link to Easy Peasy Business and I will put a link to um, everything else that is required for this journal. I literally, I can't believe I've just spoken for 30 minutes on this, but it's needed, right? Um, enjoy. Love you. See you on the next vlog.